Stations are various locations along the length of the wall. The value for each station is essentially the length of the wall at any particular point. Stations or lengths along the wall are cumulative. In other words, if the first station or wall start was zero feet, then last station would be the total length of the wall. You can also refer to stations as chainages. At these stations, we can input the grades at the top and bottom of the wall to define that face view of our wall. Keep in mind the top of the wall grade is the grade immediately behind the coping unit at the top of the wall, and the bottom of the wall grade is the finished grade in front of the wall, not the actual foundation elevation of the wall. As mentioned, the first station is the beginning of the wall, as if you were standing in front of the built wall and looking at it from left to right. Station 1 can simply be input as 0 feet. Just to ensure your understanding of how the station's tab relates to an actual plan view of a retaining wall, I will bring up a sample CAD drawing. In this plan view, a simple retaining wall is shown. You will see that at various points along the length of the wall, the designer has provided TW and BW grades. The station that relate to these grades are measured from the beginning of the wall. We will input station 1 as 0 feet and input the TW and BW grades. Notice that some stations only have either the TW or BW grades. This is okay. VESPA has a built-in interpolant function that takes care of these. We will go through the example and input the stations and grades. Using our dimension function in CAD, we will measure the position of the stations relative to the beginning of the wall. Now that our stations have been input, we can hit the Resolve Stations button to automatically interpolate between grades and fill in the missing TW and BW grades. An elevation of our wall geometry is now generated. We have just demonstrated how the wall geometry can be manually input into VESPA. VESPA has also been equipped with the ability to automatically import grading information directly from CAD using a CAD tool called AWOL. Information on the AWOL CAD tool can be found at ctiware.com, but for the time being, we will show you briefly how it works. The sample wall seen in CAD has been created using the AWOL routine. As such, we can simply select the wall as shown and create an export file. Now that we have created an AWOL file, we can go back to VESPA and import all the grading information automatically. The AWOL CAD tool will save the designer time and increase accuracy. By selecting the import function, we automatically bring in the wall grading info instantly, as compared to the manual input we just went through. Either way, we have our wall geometry. We will now move along to the Panels tab, where VESPA covers the wall geometry with the chosen SRW block. The Panelize routine ensures the minimum wall embedment specified in the design criteria is covered and that the top wall block exceeds the top of wall grades. Every time the wall steps up or down, a new panel is created. Since these panels are different heights, it may have different loading conditions. Each panel has to be designed independently of those on the left or right of it. The panels are numbered on the left side of the panel screen, starting at panel 1. By clicking on the graphic, we can select any individual panel as it becomes highlighted. Information on the selected panel is provided below the elevation view. We can navigate the elevation view using the controls at the bottom of the screen or by clicking on the graphic. To pan left and right, simply grab the graphic and pan. 
This can also be done with the slider below the elevation view. Below this are zoom controls, allowing custom zooming and zoom to horizontal and vertical extents. Note that the highest panel is designated with a small arrow underneath it. Many designers start designing at this panel as it may often be the most critical. Along the top of the screen are the wall settings. These are settings that you can define how the panelization works on all panels. The defaults for these values are as defined in the design criteria. However, the defaults are minimum values. In some cases, the designer may require greater wall embedment than would be required by the NCMA minimum standards. An example of this would be a steep slope in front of the wall. This can be handled by either setting the minimum number of courses to be embedded or the percentage of wall embedment. In other cases, if a wall has a great deal of stepping at the bottom, it may be preferable to bury more material and not have as many steps to reduce the construction labor. In this situation, the designer can set the base stepping courses to two or more. You can see that by doing this, we increase the total embedment but reduce the number of panels. The base vertical adjustment function allows the user to move the entire wall up or down a maximum of one block height. This function is helpful if a very specific grade is trying to be met at either the top or bottom of the wall. The total wall area is shown adjacent to this. The designer has the option of including the coping in the wall height or not. For some SRW systems, the coping unit is a relatively small element that is always assumed to be above grade. In other systems, the coping unit is as large as the standard wall units and the designer may want to include it in the total wall height. You can see the difference in the panelization by turning this on or off. In this example, we will not include the coping in the wall height. To the left of the elevation view, we have the option of modifying individual panels. We can split a panel, which divides one panel into two, or merge panels, which is the opposite and joins adjacent panels. You can also manually manipulate a panel with the arrow controls. The designer can adjust the embedment for individual panels as well. An example of this would be if only one portion of the wall had a steep slope below it and the designer only wanted to increase embedment for a few panels. Finally, the designer can input markers along the length of the wall. Since we are taking a plan view of the wall and essentially stretching it out flat on the screen, we lose the plan geometry of the wall. Using the markers, we can input locations of curves and other significant elements to refer our elevation view back to the plan. As a side note, the AWOL CAD tool allows the user to automatically import these markers directly from CAD. Now that we have defined our wall geometry, we have to apply loading conditions to all panels. We will do this in the next tutorial, tutorial number five.